What is it about orchids that inspires so many enthusiasts to surround themselves in this passion? Is it the fact that you could spend a lifetime researching orchids and still only cover the tip of the iceberg? 35,000 species growing on trees, rocks, in the ground, forests, woodlands, grasslands on six out of seven continents? Today we're going to focus on one aspect that may inspire so many orchid enthusiasts and that's the labellum, a modified petal. First, let's compare orchids to a standard flower. Standard flowers, like this dandelion, are comprised of what is known as actinomorphic symmetry. That is, they can be cut in half across various angles. Orchids, however, are what's known as zygomorphic and can only be cut in half along one angle, as the sun orchid demonstrates. Going back to the dandelion, we see the basic parts of it. The sepals, which protect the flower when in bud, the bright yellow petals, which attract bees, and then the wispy bits in the middle that are the male and the female reproductive organs. Back to the sun orchid, we see all the same features as the dandelion, just in a highly specialised form, existing in a particular environmental niche. The sepals still protect the flower, the petals attract the pollinator to the singular reproductive organ in the centre, known as a column. At the base of this organ, we see a petal sticking out. Nothing too crazy in this one, but let's have a look at a few other species, and this is where things can get a little weird. Here, a rusty greenhood labellum imitates its pollinator, a gnat, a small insect which will come and try to mate with this petal, triggering a reaction which flicks it up into the hood, sending the insect into a frenzy, pollinating the orchid before it leaves empty-handed. To an ichneumon wasp, this big red labellum of the large tongue orchid is a busty female luring it in, again to deceive it in order of being pollinated. This elbow orchid has decided to grow upside down, its modified labellum having a fiery red head with big brown eyes attract a particular thionine wasp. As the male wasp mates with the labellum, it flies backwards and forwards and it hits that reproductive organ, that column that we were talking about before, pollinating the orchid. Another orchid which is growing upside down, and when we flip it up the other way, we can see the head of the duck and its neck is the labellum. When a pollinator makes its way under the beak, it snaps shut like a rusty green hood, trapping the pollinator inside, again sending it into a frenzy and pollinating the duck orchid. And now this guy needs a shave. Bearded orchids have a hairy labellum. I'm unsure of the purpose. Some bearded orchids are self-pollinated and others require a wasp. Either way, they add to the inspiration of orchids and the curiosity of the labellum. This dipodium provides a convenient landing platform for bees and wasps to inquire at their own leisure. A large and showy flower spike is sure to get attention. Different species may have stripes or dots along the labellum with these silica hairs that we see at the front. Bird orchids have what is known as calli on the labellum, glands designed to attract a male thionine wasp. Considering all these orchids seem to take advantage of male wasps, I wonder how this affects the females and their ability to attain a long-lasting, healthy relationship. Now I have to be very careful in saying this. I want to say my favourite labellum, but there's so many out there. So, some very inspiring labellums can be found in the Arachnorchis genus, or the spider orchids. Contrasting colours, exaggerated margins and sharp calli are very appealing. There are a number of different types of spider orchids, each with different characteristics. Some having a hinge labellum, which can vibrate in the wind. Perhaps this helps, again, to attract a specific pollinator, which will try to mate with it. Every now and again, Orchids must confuse themselves or feel a little left out and they get the vibe to grow two labellums. This is something seen in indigenous orchid populations as well as cultivated varieties. No labellum. Get out of here. Get out. No, actually, that's cool. That's very cool. 
Like genetic variations in any flora and fauna species may inspire curiosity, labellum variations are up there with the best of them. I wonder if labellums can have a, such a profound effect on humans. Imagine how these poor wasps must feel. Poaching orchids often results in their death as their particular requirements can't be met and also puts pressure on genetic diversity in the wild. Orchids have adapted to a particular means of survival, which is why it's important that we protect the environment as a whole with all its natural processes in place. And that concludes our labellum special. I hope you've been inspired to look a little closer and carefully. Thanks for watching.